Welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith. And as you can see from the title of the video, we are definitely doing a list today. It is going to be the top 30 most anticipated solo games of 2021. This is something that I threw out to my Rolling Solo board game community on Facebook. It's a group. If you're not a part of it, definitely recommend you jump in. And there was all kinds of voting on these games and they were choosing their most anticipated games for this year for the community in general. So I'm really excited to go over this list with you. Uh, it might point you to some games you haven't heard of, or it might point to some games you've already heard of, uh, but either way, hopefully something on this list jumps out to you of interest. Now, of course, I could go well beyond 30 with the list that I got back from my community, but we had to trim it at a certain point or this video would go on forever. Um, so the first couple things I wanna talk about before we actually dive into the 30th position and then go forward is, uh, the Rolling Solo board game community group on Facebook is currently hitting 4,500 members. It may be over that at this point. Uh, the group is growing at a insane rate. Uh, the thing's only been around for about a year and a half or so. Um, and it's amazing to see everybody from the community showing up there, sharing the game, showing pictures. And it's just awesome to connect on another level beyond just this YouTube uh, platform here. I feel like sometimes it feels a little callous, a little cold as as I'm producing videos for you guys. You guys can comment on them. I can respond back, which I do and put a ton of effort into responding to every single comment that lands. Um, but I feel like there's another level of connection when you guys are able to actually share something back to me uh, and start a conversation or start a question. And those are the kind of things that that rolling solo board game community on Facebook is supposed to be there for to give you guys a voice. Uh, you know, that's something that like you can actually express your thoughts and opinions on things there. So. Long story short, hope you are there. If you're not already, jump in with us. Um, the other thing I need to clear up is the fact that uh, 25,000 subscribers passed long ago, um, not too long ago, but I think November-ish, October-ish, somewhere in that range. I did a video uh, and during that video, I did a ton of giveaways. We had like 10 plus different giveaways with multiple winners on a couple of them. Um, and I haven't announced the giveaway winners yet. Not only are you gonna find them if you have already snuck into the video description, you'll have seen them or the pinned comment you'll have already seen them i'll be emailing all of the winners so as you can see on screen right now a huge congratulations to all the winners uh, of this twenty-five thousand giveaway uh, extravaganza, I want to call, where we were just basically giving away a whole bunch of games. Uh, I'm going to be in contact with each of you by email. We'll get your uh, information that we need in order to ship all this stuff to you. Um, it will take some time, so you're going to have to bear with me. If you're a winner, you can already kind of sit back and wait for my email to come because it will come. Uh, but I do want to say a big time thank you for supporting the channel and also just for being patient because typically I turn around the winner side of things on giveaways quite fast. Uh, but with the holiday season kind of landing literally at the tail end of that giveaway, I had, I had to give it a little bit of time. So that wraps that up. The final thing I want to talk about before we dive into the list is about my Patreon. Yes, Rolling Solo has one. If you have not heard of it, we would love to have you there. The individuals that are already there, you guys are amazing and awesome. I consider you guys the backbone of the channel. That financial support goes a long, long way to help me out with continuing to bump up my production quality as well. And I've still got some pretty lofty things that I'd like to accomplish in 2021. And only really with your support is that going to be doable uh, so i really really hope that if i'm creating videos that you guys find informative and helpful in distinguishing which games you should pick which games you should stay away from uh, that type of thing with the content i'm creating 
I really hope that you'll consider supporting uh, and it really kind of opens the doors up in terms of what's possible and what other avenues I could basically get into or ideas that I have that I'd like to kind of open the can on essentially. So only with your support is that kind of stuff going to be possible. So uh, long story short, even if it's just a cup of coffee, literally, that is amazing by itself. Uh, but if it's anything above that, that's even better. And I have a number of different tiers on my Patreon, so you can feel comfortable picking one that actually gives you some benefits that you're truly interested in. Uh, but that's about as much as I want to talk about. The other thing I want to mention, though, is that for the current patrons of the channel right now, uh, I did recently actually go ahead and pick up one of my own mugs because I wanted to see what the these things actually look like uh, and this is what it came out like you got the mug here you got the logo on the one side and you also have the logo on the other side as well of course so no matter which angle you are drinking from or looking from at that mug you're going to see rolling solo on it and just to let you know it makes everything you put in that mug taste so much better and for 15 easy payments of 199, you can have, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so literally I, what I want to do is I actually bought one of these for myself because I wanted to have a mug with the logo on it. Cause I, I do, I do like my logo. Um, well, I made it. Um, and then uh, on top of that, I also got another one. And uh, really what I want to do is give away uh, the second mug that I have uh, uh, to one of my patrons of my channel. So basically by the end of February, I'm just going to pick somebody at random and fire it to them. Now you may have noticed that there's something lurking behind me in the shot, uh, underneath the mug that we just talked about, uh, under falling skies. That's right. We have a giveaway that has not closed yet. So even though I just announced all the winners earlier, uh, for the giveaways for 25,000, this one kind of came in a little bit later. This is a highly sought after game. And on top of it, this landed in my second position on my top 10 solo game list for myself personally, and was also highly rated by the Rolling Solo community as well. I'm going to be sending this out to the lucky winner. I believe if my memory serves, it's around 17 to 18 days from closing of that giveaway. So don't forget to jump in on that. That's going to be in the pin comment. Uh, do yourself a favor and get in on that one. As like I said, it's tough to find that thing right now. Uh, what we're going to do next is of course, what we're here to do, which is to talk about the top 30 most anticipated solo games of 2021. So, Without further ado, let's go ahead and start with position 30. And that position belongs to Sword and Sorcery Ancient Chronicles from Arius Games. Now in each one of these 30 games we go through, instead of going over the game and what it's all about, which I typically do with most of my list videos, instead we're gonna focus on the most recent update on the Kickstarter, if it in fact is a Kickstarter. Otherwise, I'll just give an update in terms of when it's going to hit retail. So in this case, Ancient Chronicles being a Kickstarter, the most recent update was as of the 21st, and it is starting to show some of the production shots from the game, which is pretty exciting. So you're starting to see some actual components coming through here as they're checking to ensure everything is correct. Uh, I believe, of course, with the Chinese New Year being right in around in the near future, it's going to affect deliveries as it always does when it shuts down. Um, so that is one of the major things of this update that they're trying to work around is they're confirming that everything's been printed. And of course, this is all going to butt up right against that new year and whether they can pull it off. So at least they're being upfront about that. We're not too sure, but I'm going to guess that we're going to see this probably in the first half of 2021, but we'll see how this ends up panning out. Number 29 belongs to Chip Theory Games with Cloud Spire and Cars Plunder, as well as the series reprint being a part of that. Uh, we'll definitely go to the update for this one. It has been covered on the channel. I did a full showcase for Cloud Spire, uh, and I will show you the most recent update here because I believe, yes, they're getting into some of the unboxings and the questions of when this stuff is going to start landing. So you can see here that for US and Canada, it's looking like around March is what they're aiming for for and then there's different time frames depending on where else you are as well uh, but again giving good good information in these updates in terms of where you are in the world and how this is going to pan out so it's looking like if things go their way they are going to see this thing delivered inside of q1 or it might just barely squeak in uh, at the beginning of q2 20th position belongs to Destinies from Lucky Duck Games. We'll show you the update, the most recent one here as well. Uh, a manufacturing update number five. So that's a good thing. You can see here 
the final pre-production copy of the base game. They can't be happier about it. Uh, they've got pictures of this right here. I'll go through these with you. You can see it's looking pretty good. That insert's looking nice too. It's like it keeps everything there. What's one thing they do really, really well, especially with Chronicles of Crime, like everything had a spot where it was stored. Uh, so that's looking like it's the case here as well. They got the metal coins are showing off. The shipping update though down here mentions that uh, for now, they're not going to state too much on when things are going to ship just based on what's going on up in this section here. Uh, so long story short, we're waiting to find out when this is going to begin shipping, but it's up in the air at this moment. Uh, but really looking forward to this one. In the 27th position, this one was not a Kickstarter. This is Marvel Champions, the card game Galaxy's Most Wanted. And I can see why this one's popular. I'm really excited for this one as well as a huge fan of the individuals behind this one. And especially because I've recently gone ahead and chronologically watched all the uh, MCU all over again. I've been doing that quite a bit lately. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to this thing landing in the near future. In the 26th position, we have two things specific to Kingdom Death Monster. We have the Gambler's Chest expansion. This is a beast. This is a massive thing that has grown exponentially in cost in the Pledge Manager since it originally landed on 1.5, uh, where it was quite a bit cheaper than it is now to pick up uh, in the Pledge Manager. And I believe the Pledge Manager has closed over the holidays again, as it typically does for KDM. Uh, and then we also have the Campaigns of Death expansion and that really is going to tie the bow on the original core plus the original expansions and looping all those things together and add all kinds of wonderful things in between so i'm not really going to dive into too much depth on these ones uh these are part of a kickstarter that has been uh ongoing for a long time <laughs> and everyone is aware of where this one is at and uh, who knows who knows when they're going to show up the 25th position belongs to Townsfolk Tussle. This comes from Panic Roll. And this actually just had its PM close as of the last update, I believe around mid-January, early January. Um, so basically going into this one, uh, we're going to be heading into a time of development and production to get this thing ready for September. So there hasn't been really any shuffling or changing to the delivery date. We're still expecting this thing likely in the last quarter of 2021. Position 24 belongs to Return to Dark Tower, and the latest update has been a real big focus on the development of the tower itself, which is actually a really cool update to check out because this is going to be something that has its own circuit board inside of it. The tower is looking extremely cool uh, just from these prototype builds, and that's exactly what's going on right now. They're building prototypes of these towers, testing them, working them around with the app to ensure everything's syncing up and working well. So there's a whole update here. All this information you can get on that. In terms of shipping yet, that really hasn't been spoken for, although I believe this one was aiming to deliver originally for February of 2021, but I don't think that's going to be happening. Um, but it's really cool to see the progress of the build of this thing because there's a beyond, it's beyond a board game for sure. There's an electronic side to this thing that is very important to have nailed down before it goes out the door and it's going to make it a very unique experience. Number 23 is Anachrony Fractures of Time and the Infinity Box. And I can tell you of this list, I have received this one. I believe I received it about a week ago. So my anticipation is pretty high and I already went through organizing everything inside of the amazing Infinity Box that has everything stored beautifully. So for me personally, uh, this one anticipation wise high up there. A lot of other people are also receiving theirs right now. So fulfillment is literally one of the examples I gave at the beginning of the video where I said some of these things could be arriving on doorsteps as we speak and that's exactly what this update is all about just letting people know that these shipping updates are coming in fast and furious as people are receiving these in different parts of the world at different times Final Girl belongs at slot 22. This comes from Van Rider Games. And as you can see, the estimated delivery date was 2021. It looks to be on par with that as there are pictures coming out of the production version of this game now. So you've got videos showing off everything inside, but also some shots here of what all this looks like. You got the play mat, uh, the instruction manual, the different episodes, the miniatures. It's looking pretty good. So it's getting down to the very, very end here. It looks like this. They're uh, closing up for late pledges and upgrades at the end of January. So as of right now, there's still chance. Um, 
And uh, that's pretty much it for that one. So if you're interested, it appears like this one might actually be available. It looks like late pledges are available too. So if this is intriguing to you, you may want to watch the video to find out exactly what's inside of this. Check out my videos and uh, you may still have time to jump in on this one. 21st on the list is Bloodborne, the board game. Really excited for this one. The community is excited for this one. And it's really cool to see this list unfolding of all these games that the Rolling Solo community is excited for. This is another example of a game that is literally delivering as we speak. So a large majority of those individuals watching this may have already received this or are literally going to be receiving this within like the next week or so. Now, in terms of Canada, I don't believe that they've actually started landing just yet but um in the on the other side of the world bloodborne has been delivering for quite some time now and the u.s is just starting to uh to get uh, its deliveries coming in as people are posting pictures and everything else but all the updates in terms of where they're at can be found here uk's 80 percent done the eu is 70 percent done the containers are just trying to get through customs in canada australia's got some you know delays around clearing customs and in the u.s i know right now like i said i'm seeing those pictures so i know they're landing uh two-thirds of the pledges have already been mailed out so they're probably getting closer to being done now in the 20th position is Storm Sunder Heirs of Ruin. And as you can see from the top of the Kickstarter, late pledges are still available for this one. So if you're interested in this one or you dive into it and do your research, you might want to check this one out before that closes up. One thing to mention in terms of updates, they're talking a lot about VAT right now. And that's a big ticket item being talked about around the industry. Uh, one thing that I noticed going through this update, which was quite funny, was them talking talking about landing into the uh, BGG's 20 most anticipated games of 2021. That's literally the kind of video I'm doing right now, except mine's the top 30. And guess what? You guys made it as the 20th. So Laser Squire Games, you guys made it as the 20th on my list. And you can see right here, it says vote for Storm Center here so we can make it into the coveted final 20 for BGG. Well, guess what, guys? I'm rolling solo. You made it in. <laughs> So I'm excited for this one to see uh, what's going to come out of the final version when it lands. And it looks like they're taking money from the pledge manager on uh, February 3rd. So there's still is some time. We're now moving into the teens of this top 30 list with Cartographer's Heroes. And this comes from Keith. And this one, I'm going to go ahead and just jump into the update because it is still open right now, I believe to pick up as you can see right here the pledge manager is open until february 1st late pledges are available still so if you want to jump in on this one do your research to see this one is going to be coming pretty soon it looks like it's aiming for august 2021 Massive Darkness 2 Hellscape lands at 18. There is still the ability to late pledge on this one, and the pledge manager is wide open, of course. And uh, there's a lot. I mean, if you go all the way with this one and bling it out, it's an expensive Kickstarter for sure, but you don't need to do that. You can get the gameplay elements for less than blinging it out, and you have until March uh, 12th, it looks like, uh, to submit and pay for your pledge. Uh, you don't want to be late on that. Uh, I imagine that you'll be be able to hum and haw up to that point as a late backer to decide whether you want to jump in or not but they're starting to show some pictures of stuff uh just to kind of get people intrigued on what is coming down and it also if you're curious in the gameplay itself i did a massive darkness 2 uh tabletop simulator a demo of one of the scenarios so that'll definitely give you a good idea as to how much has changed from the original massive darkness to the one that they are looking at pushing out the door with massive darkness 2 Number 17 on the list is Hell, The Last Saga. This comes from Mythic Games. We'll take a look at the updates, but I do want to mention at the top of this, late pledges are available for this one as well. There's going to be a number of these that still have availability to jump in on them if you are intrigued enough to do so. Um, and here is an update. The last one is a What's Up Wednesday for an open play test. They're taking applications. There's limited spaces in this. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. You can actually email David at Mythic games in order to get in on that if there is still space and uh, they do updates weekly i believe on this one so you can stay tuned for what's going on in terms of its delivery date i'm actually not sure whether it's sticking to the june 2020 date or not i'd have to dive into the updates a little bit further to find that i'm not sure offhand 
Burn Cycle from Chip Theory Games sits in slot 16. There is the availability to late pledge right now. And if I'm not mistaken, the pledge manager literally opened up, I think, a few days ago or so. It was very, very recent. Uh, we'll check out that uh, opening here. There's also looks like there's going to be a PM deadline announcement and extension here. So it's going to be closing on March the 5th. So again, another one where you have some time to think about this one in terms of whether you're interested in jumping in on any further. Um, and they also, of course, have updates on the gameplay as it goes along in terms of their uh, development of the game and what they're doing behind the scenes. They got some awesome artwork along the way. Uh, this is one that solo players should definitely keep an eye on. We've made it to the halfway point of the list. And in this position, number 15, we have Frostpunk, the board game. This comes from Glass Cannon Unplugged. And if you're interested in seeing gameplay, I did a Kickstarter preview of this one as well. Uh, you can see it's from the designers of Nemesis and This War of Mine, two games that I've highly recommended to almost every single solo gamer under the sun. So this was of great interest to me. Looking forward to seeing more on this one in the future. Uh, the latest update gave some hints around the pledge manager for those that are interested. It hasn't launched yet. They might be doing kind of a pilot thing, uh, but they were aiming for the end of January to get things going, uh, or I should say mid January, but now we're in the tail end of January, but long story short, it looks like they're going to have their pledge manager up sometime in the first quarter of 2021. And they're going to probably close it around the end of March, around the end of that first quarter. So you'll have lots of time uh, to get in on it. In terms of late pledges, I'm not sure how that's going to work just yet. That information might be buried in this update. So do a quick read through to find that out if you missed out and you want to jump in later on. Tenarius Adventures plus the Arena of the Contest 1.5 belong in slot 14 on the list from Jagori Games. I'm going to show you the most recent update from this one. This is a highly anticipated game. Uh, you can see here the most recent one was unboxing videos and uh, city structures being shown off. So if we check out this update, you can see the unboxing of the Dragon Collection. That's right. They have a collection of dragons coming in this game that are going to be painted if you so choose to buy that cosmetic add-on and they look really really good uh, so they're showing the unboxing of all those including the ones that aren't painted as well plus going through some packs the core box we can expect all that good stuff so if you're interested in this one you may want to check this update out because it might tip the scales for you in terms of whether you grab it or not the other thing to make note of at the very beginning of the campaign is that it still appears you can go ahead and late pledge for this one so if you haven't checked it out, highly recommend you do so. I also have unboxings for the original content on the channel too. Number 13, Machina Arcana 2 Eternity. Think of this game. This is the third iteration. That's the third version of this particular game, plus the addition of the 2 Eternity expansion on top of it. Uh, every iteration pumps this game up to another level and adds more content. Uh, you can pre-order this now, even if you miss the Kickstarter, so that's an advantage. Um, and then diving into the most recent update for this particular Kickstarter, the production date has been announced. Returning backers bonus has been applied. So this is talking about that bonus and then right here it starts talking about uh the pm really and the orders being locked down uh, as of the first of february and cards being charged third of february so you've got a window right now to get in if you uh even on the uh, pre-order side if you missed out on the kickstarter so you might want to dive into this one and check it out see where it's come from with this first iteration all the way up till now and then make an informed decision on it. I believe I do have an unboxing of the second edition on the channel, which should help you out. Number 12 is not for a Kickstarter at all. It's for a beloved solo game called Robinson Crusoe, The Book of Adventures. And this is going to be a really cool add-on for people that love Robinson Crusoe. As you can see from the description down here, it's going to be an almanac that consists of new Robinson Crusoe scenarios ranked by their level of difficulty, complexity, and theme, which is going to be awesome to be able to just have one spot to check out all the different adventures and choose them at your leisure and they're literally going to be balanced to be able to play with children for some of those scenarios also have fun family experiences and then of course the things that most people are experienced with on the solo front which is the really heavy tough scenarios that are very very unforgiving but there is something to be said for this game recently i picked up the top shelf gamer uh pack just to kind of bling this game out i love robinson crusoe the last one in the teens for this list is role player adventures and this is also coming from keith that we saw one of his entries earlier on as well uh the late pledges are available for this one this is going to take role player on a whole different uh adventure 
That's what I want to say. Uh, most people are familiar with the original role player, and I really think what they're doing here by bringing it into kind of a campaign type setting, that is something that is going to appeal to a lot of people or maybe be what a lot of people were looking for in that original entry of role player. So I'm really excited to see what comes out of this one. Uh, so you definitely can jump in on this if you're coming into this one late. Uh, the most recent update uh, states January update entering mass production pledge manager closes February 1st. So again, a lot of these Kickstarters on this list that are most anticipated by the Rolling Solo community are literally closing within this month. Uh, they're coming right down to the tail ends. So you don't want to waste this last week or so of January researching, double checking, making sure you're content, whether you're backing or not backing particular games based on what you believe you're going after. And again, you can keep your uh, eyes on these types of things to find out where to go to actually go ahead and back them or just an update in general on when they expect to release the game. In this case, they're aiming for July, August of this year. We have now entered the top 10 of the list. This is going to be an exciting run of 10 games. We're starting it off with the Isofarian Guard from Sky Kingdom Games, a game that I cover with a Kickstarter preview on the channel to help you make an informed decision on it. The late pledges are still available for it, and I'll check out the most recent update. The updates for this game have been fantastic uh, throughout. They've been really in-depth and covering all their from facets of the development uh so the timeline here is all mentioned you get the december update and status here uh they break everything down by percentages so you can easily see where they're currently at as you can see total completions at 67 percent right now uh if we run through here you got your artwork more development and uh pre-press you can see this is getting closer and closer um and you can see the timeline for all this stuff here uh in terms of the deadline of when they want these things done uh, and we're going to keep on running down here because I want to show you uh, there is some awesome pictures of some of these prototypes coming through and uh, then making changes and rebuilding them and stuff like that. Looking pretty awesome. And then, of course, they've got some uh, they got Foreteller games merged in with this one as well. So they have some fantastic voice uh, narration going on with this game, which is going to elevate it to another level. Plus, on top of the fact it has game trays involved, which I love. Huge fan of game trays, because as I said a thousand times over, they make life so easy uh, storing, organizing and setting up games and tearing them down even too. It's just ugh, so good. Once I find once I get used to them, it bothers me when I don't see them. <laughs> like, it actually does because I just like them so much. Um, well, that's it about Ice and Fairy and Guard. I'm really excited for this one. Again, if you're not familiar with it at all, check out my Kickstarter preview. Sleeping Gods from Ryan Lockett at number nine. Definitely, definitely deserving. This one is highly anticipated all over the board. I think a lot of people that loved Above and Below and Near and Far are looking at this one as the next elevation of his game design, especially pushing it more towards the adventure, uh, but really feeling that adventure. And that's how I think a lot of people are jumping on board with this one, excited for it. Um, and if we take a look at the updates, the game shipping schedule, it's it's nice to know that fulfillment's actually underway. Uh, so as you can see right here, Australia, New Zealand, their update is right here for those two locations, United Kingdom, the uh, EU and the rest of Europe down here for what I am, uh, the States, Canada, and the rest of the world. I'm currently located in Canada. The shipment's scheduled to arrive at the warehouse in Florida this week, and fulfillment should begin mid-January. So I'm thinking for Canada, it's probably going to land for me sometime in February. I'm really looking forward to this thing landing on my doorstep. And Number eight on the list is Aeon Trespass Odyssey. Still has available late pledges for those individuals interested coming from Into the Unknown. And updates around this one, I believe actually taking a look at the campaign the original delivery dates were set for january so this is obviously slipping a little bit uh, so i'll have to check through the updates to find out where the timeline is currently but i believe it's landing this year based on what i'm seeing in those updates this is a hotly anticipated game and it is a behemoth of one at the same time Number seven on the list is Ether Fields, and late pledges are still available as most backers have gotten, pretty much every backer has gotten from Wave 1 all their content, and uh, Wave 2 will be coming in the future with some extra add-ons to help out those that were struggling with the original rules and just the basic concepts of the game. Uh, but if you grab a late pledge, all those things will be included. The update that most recently landed for this Kickstarter uh, was all about guides and stuff to help people get going and understand that not everything in the rulebook that they read from the beginning apply to the very first thing you jump into in Etherfields. 
The game is very much discovery and you learn as you play. It's got that this war of mine feel where you kind of play the game and discover how the game unfolds as you go. But you have to understand the structure of it is really the key to begin at least. And I think this guide that they've provided this update right here is huge. Plus they're gonna be working on, or they're working on a how to play video and some other things in here as well. So they got a guide here, and this is honestly what you really need to understand to get going in ether fields and enjoy the game from the beginning. Um, and then use the rule book as a reference uh, when you need it based on your discovery within the game. And that's where I think a lot of people got confused. Uh, there's a lot of people that didn't understand that that's kind of the logic behind the learning of this one. It's not like a typical board game where you read the rule book and then just go apply everything while you play. This one needed a guide at the beginning for what's important to know everything else, wait till later until you run into it and then reference as needed in the rule book. Um, but long story short, this one is completely available. It still has an open pledge and uh, is very anticipated uh, for the rest of wave two to come as well as individuals that are now jumping in for wave one. Number six on the list is Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon, another project from Awaken Realms. This one's a little bit further along as it's now delivering wave two right now. So whereas Etherfields has just delivered wave one and they were moving into two, this one's delivering wave two, which means there was a bunch of backers that jumped in for the very first time uh, during that wave two and also grabbed some wave one content. They're very excited to see everything show up. They're near the tail end of this thing, whereas somebody like me, for instance, was excited to see my wave two show up, which actually it did a week ago. Now I've got tons of content for this game and the most recent update probably speaks to the time frame of deliveries on this stuff and just the update in general. Uh, so you can see here, they've got a banana for scale you always need to have that to know exactly how big the box is. Um, and then, of course, uh, it's talking about exactly how many orders are left to be shipped or have shipped. Um, you can see Canada's got over 70% uh, shipped out the door, 66 here. And this was as of um, the 20th. So uh, this one's well underway. There's a lot of anticipation behind this one and getting everything else that was coming in the Kickstarter. And we're not done yet with Awakened Realms because in the fifth position is Nemesis Lockdown. Yes, I've covered every single one of these Awakened Realm games on the channel. Uh, and honestly, Nemesis is one of my personal favorites. It was one that I just, I don't understand uh, how I uh, waited so long to open up that original core box in Nemesis. I had it on my game shelf for, I think, six months before I actually unwrapped it. And when I played it, I was hooked so badly. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And here they've got lockdown. So more of the goodness in the nemesis realm. Uh, it's a, the late pledges are still available here. Not too sure how long that's going to last, but we can see if there's any updates inside this wave one production right now. Uh, so we'll just move through here. This is more so happening at the end of the year. So as of now, it's about a month, a month prior. Uh, production update right now. So they have some bad news. There is a delay on the first wave, which is probably, you know, that, that kind of makes sense just based on the world and where things are at right now. Um, and then of course, this is something I'm seeing across multiple Kickstarters as container prices are going up. This is not something that Awaken Realms is just dealing with on their own. I've seen this in almost every other update as we've gone through this list. Um, but long story short, they're going to be having to work through all those different fluctuations and prices and things like that as they go along. Um, and if you keep on moving through the update here, you can say there's some delay here. It looks like the games are going to start shipping around the end of March, first half of April is now what they're estimating. Number four on the list is the Seventh Citadel, and this is from Sirius Pulp. We also covered this on the channel with a Kickstarter preview as well. If you want to find out and see more gameplay, we also checked out the Seventh Continent and did a playthrough for that as well. Uh, updates on this one in terms of where it is at. It says third and final mystery stretch goal. This was as of January 13th. Um, I don't know if these ones. Oh, yes, here we go. So opening of the pledge manager. We would like to take the opportunity to remind you the opening of the pledge managers are still scheduled for spring. So we got lots of time. So this is the thing right now. And I've noticed this on a number of the entries in this list, which is really fantastic timing for my community. If you are just seeing this video right now, there are so many of the games on these uh, on this list right now that just happen to have their uh, late pledges and pledges available. There's not many of them that have actually closed completely yet. Um, 
you definitely have an opportunity here to do some research across these ones and determine which ones suit you the best. And those windows are going to start closing really soon. I bet you, well, we know that February 1st closes a number of them, but probably by the end of Q1, you are going to probably eliminate the idea of picking up a large majority of this list uh, by sometime in March. So you're going to want to do some serious research in the next couple of weeks to determine which ones here are of interest to you. In the third position, we're talking top three territory now. We have Osworn into the deep wood. And just to let you guys know, every time you see one of these buttons on the Kickstarter, it says late pledge here. It doesn't necessarily mean that behind the scenes, when you click this button, you're actually going to be able to late pledge. Uh, in this case, for Osworn, the pledge manager at this point is closed. So at this point, it is too late to jump in. However, I wouldn't be surprised if after the Kickstarter, there is either a reprint or additional content, or this is going to end up on maybe Shadowborn Games' own store or go to retail in some capacity. We shall see how all that pans out. Right now, the focus is on the Kickstarter. The latest update really just shows a lot of uh, push fit examples or samples here in the video. It also shows some of the models as you go through. The game looks really, really good. And if you want to get a bit, oh, this is insane. A 20,000 word chapter flow chart. This is breaking down how they basically flow, like the flow essentially of all of this insanity in the game. It's craziness. Um, and then moving down here, some cool polls that actually I believe were pulled from Board Game Geek about like what people prefer, dice or cards. The game, the game has a really cool mechanic of allowing you to choose kind of how you want to modify things. And I seem to lean more towards the dice, but that's just because I enjoy rolling the dice. But the cards probably have more strategic value in that if you burn uh, a lot of the bad ones, you know that your card results going forward will have you'll have better odds of getting good ones, right? Whereas dice... It's just like a 50-50 shot in the dark. You might have a good roll. You might have a bad roll kind of thing. Um, but yeah, they, they, it's just really interesting mechanics behind this one. The fact it's a big boss battler and, uh, you know, some of the scenes for some of these bosses are just going to be crazy battles <laughs> and they look really interesting. I was, I was re really glad I was able to preview this one on the channel because I think it's going to be something special. Number two on the list from Isaac Childress and Cephalofair Games, Frosthaven. I mean, how could you not have this on the list? And it doesn't make any sense for this to be outside the top five, in my opinion, Frosthaven, this, this is going to, in my opinion, just revamp the way Gloomhaven was created in terms of adding so much more of the in-between game. I think that was missing from Gloomhaven in terms of caring about your settlement, crafting, like all these things that are just going to add another element to the game beyond just trying to solve a scenario. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this one uh, landing. The most recent update here states backer and retailer pledge manager updates. So as of right here, I'm just going to move through all this kind of stuff. You see the pledge manager will close to non-retailer backers on March 1st. So they're kind of getting people, they're pushing people to go ahead and close up their pledges at this point in time. So again, you're going to want to check out these updates to see if you are coming in this thing late. You can pre-order at this point. Um, and uh, they're also talking about, it looks like they got their own card sleeves. I actually missed this update, so I hadn't seen this, but that looks pretty cool on its own. Uh, and it likely is going to cover, yeah, like every single, every single thing you need to sleeve inside the game if you want that. Uh, but this definitely, I can see why it's in the top two for this list. And the number one most anticipated solo game of 2021 from the rolling solo board game community is ISS Vanguard. This is found on GameFound and not on Kickstarter, or you're going to find this in retail or anything else. Now, I don't know what its plans will be and if it might go to retail in some capacity in the future, but this was the first project the first big time project for game found uh that was outside of kickstarter and likely many more to come as you can see at the top of the screen there kingdom rush elemental uprising is the next game that's going to be landing on game found as well as another heads up that's another really fantastic solo game uh but for iss vanguard this makes a lot of sense i mean taking this uh particular poll with my community in January, ISS Vanguard was just in inside or at the tail end, I should say, of its uh, Kickstarter. So it just basically has all of the excitement around it in terms of what this thing could become uh, when it's fully flushed out and developed all the way through. There's all it's space exploration at its finest. And uh, I did do a Kickstarter preview on the channel to show off 
all the different aspects of it with the most unique and interesting probably being the ship log being kept in a binder and being updated as you go along. So you have this binder that literally keeps all the information uh, for your particular crew uh, organized, but at the same time, every section has different and really cool un unlockable uh, crafting kind of components going on. You can bring pieces back from planets and kind of, you know, meld them together to make things or gain things and unlock things. It's just really cool. So long story short, the PM for this one uh, tied to GameFound, of course, has not opened up yet, but when it does, there will likely be a late pledge involved. So you'll likely be able to jump in the, on this one late if you missed the actual GameFound uh, uh, campaign that went out. But long story short, very much deserving of this spot. And I just want to say first off that this list probably could change on a monthly basis in terms of what's on top, because really at the end of the day, it's going to be what's the most exciting Kickstarter currently could land on the top of this list, or it could be what are the games that are delivering right now that people are anticipating showing up on their doorstep. And I think these kind of most anticipated lists very much fluctuate between what's coming to me in the next month versus what's literally exciting on Kickstarter or game found right now um, and i think that's a really interesting thing to point out in terms of the dynamics of a most anticipated list um but long story short this was really fun to do i didn't go over overviews of each of these as this video would have gone on way too long but i've got enough videos covering the majority of these games already that you can check out for more information and i just wanted to kind of highlight these as ones for you in case you're hunting around looking for something that might fill a void of a game you don't already have or something that you're interested in so thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to check out my patreon i would love to have you join the community there uh the rolling solo facebook group would love to see you there as well thank you guys for taking the time to check out the video and as always keep on rolling solo